For this activity, your image has to be at least 900 pixels by 1500 pixels, but it doesn't have to be a specific size. And so my image was bigger than that, so I'm going to move forward. If your image was too small, you need to go back and find a different image to use for this activity. The next step says to convert your base layer to be a smart object. The reason that we're going to do this is so that we are applying smart filters. Before I jump to Photoshop, I'm going to read through the rest of the requirements so that we don't have to keep bouncing back and forth to Canvas. After we convert the base layer to be a smart object, we are going to create three unique stylized effects using filters. We're going to apply more than one filter to each example, and we're going to use the same base image so that we can compare the different results. There are a number of ways to do this. So you can take the first image and choose File, Save As. And you can save it as the first example that you're working on. I'm going to save mine as a Photoshop file. You could also do it via the Layers panel, but I'm going to do it this, this way. We need to convert the background layer to be a smart object, but it's locked. So in order to do that, we need to unlock it, and then we can right-click and choose Convert to Smart Objects. Now, any of the filters that we apply will be applied non-destructively. So we can jump up to the Filter menu and choose Filter Gallery, and begin to play around with filters. You need to apply at least two filters to each of your examples. And so in the bottom right hand corner here, to apply a second filter, you must hit the plus sign and you can apply a second filter. Now this has the same filter applied twice, so it doesn't look any different, but if I select any one of these two, I can change it to a different filter and then you see the two filters combining. You could apply 25 filters at a time if you want to. What I would recommend is focus on your first filter first, find a filter that you like, and then apply a second one. And so I kind of like this underpainting one. Uh, maybe I increase the brush size or decrease the brush size to get more texture back in the image. You can change where the light source comes from, which change the look, changes the look of the filter. And then you can apply a second. So I'm gonna duplicate that underpainting and now instead of applying underpainting, maybe I'll apply a texture like stained glass or patchwork. When you come back, so select OK, when you come back to the layers panel, you can see the, the results of your filters. You can stop here if you want, or you can go above and beyond. We can apply a layer mask to the smart filter. And when we apply the layer mask, we can use a paintbrush to paint black on the layer mask to allow some of the original image to show through. Now this is drastic, right? It's going back to the original completely. But maybe we lower the opacity. Where is opacity? We lower the opacity so that we're just slowly painting some of the texture and some of the important areas back into the painting. And we can focus on just areas where we want to see some of the texture. Now because a smart filter will allow us to turn the, the adjustment on and off, we can turn the layer on and off to compare the before and after results. Let's open the original image again. Another option for this assignment is to duplicate the background layer before you convert it to be a smart object. This way, if we wanted to apply layer blending modes to the layer or opacity to the filters, we would be able to do that and we'll still see through it to the original layer. And so let's go ahead and apply another filter via the filter gallery. Maybe we like photocopy or graphic pen. And remember, those colors are coming from our foreground and background color, correct? So if we don't want red, we could come in here and change it to be a pink color. Come back to Filter and Filter Gallery. Now those effects are being adjusted with pink being the highlight color. And maybe we like this filter and palette knives. Let's see what that looks like. When we go to apply it, obviously this is not something we want to keep but maybe we can see what it looks like if we apply it as a layer blending mode. 
different effects can be achieved. And now if we compare, compare the before and after, we're getting this really cool stylized effect using filters by using filters and layer blending modes.